In this video, we'll look at the population regression equation and see how it models the relation between predictor and response variable in the population. We'll see that it describes the linear relation between the population means of the conditional distributions of the response variable. Don't worry, you'll understand what that means at the end of this video. Up until now, I've been a bit too simplistic in my explanation of regression. Earlier, we looked at an example where we predicted popularity of cat videos, measured as number of video views, using the cat's age as the predictor. In this very small sample, we only considered the relation between these variables for this particular sample. But of course, my hope is that the regression equation describes the relation in general, so not just for this sample, but for the entire population. If it does, then I understand the world a little bit better. It also means I can generate useful predictions for new cases. I'll be able to predict the popularity of new videos of my kitten and my older cat. So the goal is to model the relation at the population level. Later on, we'll see how we can draw inferences about this model of the population. OK, that all sounds pretty abstract. So what exactly do we model in the population? Of course, it's impossible, but suppose for a second that we could gather information about cat age and popularity for all cat videos that have ever been available online. You can imagine that if we focused just on one-year-old cats, we would find a huge number of videos with varying popularity scores. They won't all be the same. The distribution might look something like this, with a mean of 45.00. We could do the same for one and a half year old cats and 2.74 year old cats, 5.38 year old cats, and so on. For each possible cat age, we will find a distribution of varying popularity scores. For example, for the one and a half year old cats with a mean of 43.75, and for the 2.74 year old cats with a mean of 40.65, and so on. In simple linear regression, we assume that conditional on the value of the predictor, in other words, for any given cat age, the shape of the distribution of popularity scores looks exactly the same. Assuming that the relation is perfectly linear, the population regression line goes through the means of these distributions. More formally, the line describes the population means of the conditional response distributions, which are assumed to have a uniform shape and standard deviation. We can express this using the following equation, mu sub y, the conditional population mean on the response variable y, equals alpha plus beta times x, the predictor with the same standard deviation sigma at every x. This looks very similar to the expression we used earlier for the sample regression line, but with three differences. One is that we use Greek symbols for the intercept and regression coefficient to indicate that we're talking about the population regression equation. Another difference is that besides the parameters alpha and beta, we also specify the parameter sigma. Although this parameter is not in the equation, it is an essential part of the model. It will become important later on when we use the model for inferential purposes. The final difference is that we describe the population means, not predicted values for individual cases. Modeling the means of the conditional distributions per cat age is important because it allows for natural variation around the regression line in the population. If we model the predicted response value for individual cases, for example by saying y sub i equals alpha plus beta times x sub i, it would mean that we expect all cat videos of all one-year-old cats in the population to have exactly the same popularity score. And of course, that would be very unlikely. There is a way to express the model at the individual level by introducing an error term. The model looks like this, y sub i equals alpha plus beta times x sub i plus epsilon sub i. Epsilon indicates the variation around the conditional mean. It describes the conditional distributions we just saw. Conditional on the value of x, the errors are assumed to be distributed normally with a uniform standard deviation sigma and are expected to have a mean of zero. Since inclusion of epsilon can be confusing, many textbooks don't present the model in this form, but I mention it so that if you see it presented like this, you don't get confused and think it's an entirely different model. OK, back to our model of the conditional means. Ideally, the population regression line fits perfectly and goes exactly through all these means. 
Of course, it's unlikely that in the population the means will line up perfectly. They probably won't. But the straight line is assumed to be a close enough approximation to result in a useful model for description or prediction.